Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It is another glorious Florida day here midwinter. Uh, I don't like to rub it in, but I mean, damn, we pay the price in the summer. Why not enjoy the winter benefits? Today, I thought I'd share with you guys some of the ways I make money with my photography. So of course, welcome to another photo quest. On today's photo quest, we're going to go over the different ways you can possibly make money with your camera. It is uh, always very nice to get paid for your photography. Uh, we've been doing all this practicing. We've been figuring out long exposures and different filters to use. Now you may want to take all those skills and go out and make some money. Uh, I don't blame you. I try to whenever I can. It's a great little source of side income. It's very rewarding. and. It gives you an excuse to get out with the camera. So, you know, usually when you know you're going to make money, you have no problem with uh, getting up and getting out. So, let's go around. I'm uh, over here at the uh, new Starkey Ranch. I've had a request by some real estate agents to get some photos of their new homes and their model homes. So, we'll go around, we'll grab some of those, and I'll tell you exactly what goes on with that. Grab your camera. Time to do it. All right, my friends, let's talk a little bit about what I'm out here doing today. I have been hired by this wonderful builder to go around and take photographs of their model home center and their newly constructed homes. Uh, as you can see, this is a brand new community. It's called Starkey Ranch. It's one of the ways that I supplement my income. I like to have several income streams. And if I could ever make money on my photography, I am always very super happy. So what I've done is I go to places like Craigslist and Fiverr and I look for gigs with real estate agents. Real estate agents do a lot of hiring at very low budget for very high quality photography work. See what they're looking for is pictures like these. of their model homes and of the homes that have sold already and of the model home centers like you'd see in some of those photos and they use it for their internet advertising their local flyers their endorsements and advertising in local community newspapers but they don't want to pay quite the price that a high-end photographer would charge so therefore they tend to use my services or your services or whoever can answer the ad and will take the photo for 50 bucks. So I'm out here today. I'm actually working for uh, roughly around $100. I actually have two gigs. One's with a real estate agent. The other was with the model home center. See, when the real estate agent told the model home center that I was coming out to take pictures, they wanted a couple of pictures too. So altogether, I probably shoot around two dozen pictures. I make 100 bucks takes me eh, under an hour a little bit of gas a little bit of time love having my camera out anyway right so good practice good way to make some money so there's way number one utilize real estate agents uh, you can find them on Fiverr and Craigslist and under gigs and you'll see that they're advertising for high quality photos of model homes or high quality photos for MLS listings those are the ones you want to pop I usually charge around $25 for about a dozen photos so $50 for two dozen and you know around 65 for a hundred you get a real break once you go up very high it's just quick for me I put it on auto and I flash around a lot of the same angles and you get to choose the best one you want but there is way number one very accessible, very open and easy for the new amateur photographer to make some money. So, and let me finish up here and I'll take you over to place number two that I make some money from. All right, let's talk about the next way I make money with my photography. 
You see, there are uh, the need for what they call stock photos. So everything, in other words, pictures of signs, pictures of logos, pictures of people, all kinds of anything that you would see in the regular real world is required in the stock photo world. So you see things like this, flags, street signs, those have all been big sellers for me. They've helped make, uh, you know, 50 bucks a month when I'm doing it steady. It's not a lot, but I mean, anybody throwing away 50 bucks a month? It's real simple to get. As you can see, I just carry my camera with me when I'm in that mode, uh, stock photo mode, I call it. And I just start snapping off quality, high quality 4K photos of everything I can find. Street signs, uh, traffic signals, businesses. Now there is this misconception that photos like this of Burger King, McDonald's, even a place like Publix, that you wouldn't be allowed to sell those and make money because you don't have the copyright and permission from the owner. But you would be wrong, my friends, because actually you can make money with those photos, and that's why I always have a picture of every single fast food restaurant and business in my town in my portfolio see those pictures you can mark editorial and under the guidelines of editorial you can sell and make money on those pictures now it is less than on the original copy pictures that you own but still it's good money see what happens is when your local news agency uh, is doing a story about McDonald's they're not going to send their very highly paid photographer out to get pictures of McDonald's. They're going to go to a photo bucket website like uh, Black Box or Photo Ups, and they're just going to buy a whole thousand, you know, lot. Well, most of them actually have accounts where they don't have to buy anything. They log in. They have the right to use like 100 images a month, and they go in there and they pull images for editorial purposes. Because if you're doing a story about a business, well then you have every right to show that business in your story. So you couldn't use those pictures to advertise anything like say you wanted to make a sneaker commercial and have Publix in the background. You wouldn't be able to use that footage because that's not editorial, that's advertising. But if you were doing a story about how wonderful Publix is, well then by all means you could use that footage because that's an editorial story. So remember, for stock photography, Everything is good. Anything is good. Businesses, street signs, and it really gives you a, a, a focused subject that you're able to take your time and get a quality photo of. Uh, like I said, can make 50, even $100 a month without really even trying hard. So that's number two, stock photos. So you got your real estate, business uh, level photography, and you have your stock photos. Those are all really easy and obtainable goals for anybody that's uh, new into photography. You don't have to have a lot of experience. You don't have to have a name or reputation. It's simply sending in high quality pictures. And I know you guys can do that. I've been schooling you for a while now. Now, there is one more area. It is the epitome level of photography. It is much more difficult. And you, as the photographer, want to be very careful about trying to make money this way. Let's sit down and discuss this final way. All right, boys and girls, we're getting close to the end. It's about time to wrap this up. So we'll go over the last and ultimate way of making money through photography, portrait photography. Oh, that is, that is the highest and most dangerous level of photography because you see in portrait photography you are responsible for capturing people's events life events weddings proms birthdays bar mitzvahs uh, communions you name it people want coverage of it and they are very super picky about what is good and what is not good and it becomes such a personal thing that I think portrait photography 
is one of the hardest ways to make money. Even though it's the most common and most available, for me, I always look at everything with risk versus reward. There's a huge risk here. If you fail at someone's wedding, the repercussions are going to be on an epic scale. They're going to sue you, you're going to lose whatever little bit of money you did make, you're going to wind up paying out of pocket damages, and overall you're going to feel absolutely horrible, you see, because it's a wedding, it's someone's special day, and it wasn't your intentions to mess it up, and you had no, you know, you didn't plan on things going wrong, but it happens. So. I, uh, I tend to shy away from portrait photography, even though there is a ton of work. You go online to any of those places I mentioned, and I don't think there's a weekend that you won't find a party or an event where they're looking for a photographer, but they want uh, media quality photos, but you know, you're lucky to see a couple of hundred bucks for an event like that. They're making more today just being out here running around taking pictures of model homes than I would at a wedding. For a wedding, that's the biggest personal portrait event you could ever undertake. You're going to need a team of people, you're going to need some high-end equipment, and they are going to be looking for some spectacular results. So if you are just hell-bent on portrait photography, then my suggestion to you would be to start off at events for free. Yeah, I know, free don't make much money, but it will give you a sense of what people are looking for. It'll give you a taste of whether or not it's for you. Uh, when it's free, they can't sue you, they can't complain, they can't get damages. It was free service, it's considered a gift. So you may lose a couple of friends, you may make some enemies, but you'll definitely find out whether or not portrait photography is for you. And if it is, bravo. You know, again, same thing. Little steps lead to the bigger ones. Start out with birthday, backyard birthday parties and uh, uh, religious events. See, religious events are an excellent way to begin portrait photography. A, they're very forgiving. B, they are not as demanding. And C, they're really not interested in such high quality as much as content. So as long as you get all of the key people in the photos, well then they're very happy. And even when you mess up, well, you know, it's religious. They're going to forgive you, right? So, religious events, best place to start for uh, money-making photography. Now, for regular portraits, I mean, if you're going to do Christmas cards or proms or, you know, anything at that level, like almost wedding event level, well, then you definitely want to have your game on point and you're definitely going to make sure and be prepared for the worst-case scenario which is the pictures come out horrible and you're giving them back all of their money and hopefully they're not suing for, you know, damages. As you can see, here's a couple of portrait photos of people that have asked me to take their picture. I do a decent job. They come out pretty nice. I don't really, I haven't done any events. It's more been like casual barbecue and hanging out downtown with friends and, you know, just simple stuff like that, like you saw. But um, I don't even like to do portraits for my family. Oh, that's one thing I forgot. Family is the worst. If you're anything like me and you have family like mine, man, they're gonna demand a lot and they're gonna offer absolutely nothing. So I actually kind of don't do any portrait work for my family, you know, outside of my own kids and wife because, you know, the customer is going to be happy and love the photos. I know it. But anyway, those were the three easiest ways of making money with your camera. I hope it's been helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, as always, put them in those comments down below. I read them all. I'll get back to you ASAP. It's my pleasure to help you any way I can. But y'all know how we do it on this channel. Comment, like, subscribe. Love ya. See y'all in the next one. Yeah, avoid family photos for uncles and aunts. They, they ain't gonna be happy.